It's 11 o'clock Friday night. I need to be in Arizona Sunday, but if we did this right, this is gonna be the first time this thing moves under its own power. We made it to the Onyx Build Challenge. This whole thing's being shot on the Onyx YouTube channel. So if you want to see the competition, definitely see it there. But I couldn't just come here with no camera gear and not share my initial thoughts on this cool little monster we put together. This 1973 Land Rover Series 3 was a farm truck until the year 2000, whenever it was parked on the side of a house and it stayed there for 24 years until I came and got it with a set of hedge trimmers and a winch. After five hard weeks of work, we went from completely bone stock to an axle swap with Land Cruiser 80 axles. I converted the steering from manual steering to power steering. We converted it from leaf springs to coil springs. I even added a rear winch and swapped in a slightly more modern turbo diesel out of a Land Rover Defender. I feel like this Land Rover is really in its element out here. You know, when I thought Arizona, I was like, it would be so sweet to be in a convertible. We didn't have time to do a cage, but with it being like overlandy stuff, I wasn't super concerned. Just gonna be very cautious. But like, <laughs> as you can hear, not everything is trimmed correctly. This isn't done, but it feels at home on this trail in a huge way. Like, this is one of those trails where if you're overbuilt, this is gonna be boring. We are not overbuilt. We are built just right to have fun out here. And I've really, you know, I've gotta focus on what I'm doing. I've gotta drive as I'm talking to a camera, of course. But it is just a blast to have something like this on a trail like this. Something that's like a little bit understated. Something that just looks this good and something where we're, we're smack dab in the middle of the environment with no roof. You know, it's very, very fun to be out here doing this with my friends. Shows us going right through a creek crossing. It would be killer to come back here when there's running water. This trail is called Charlo Gaps down in Arizona. I really, really like this trail and I will be coming back here. But again, this is one that I wouldn't take a like tube buggy on. But if you've got like a Rubicon on 35s or even a Tacoma on 35s with a rear locker, something like that, this trail is awesome. I really am enjoying this and we're not geared quite low enough. We've got lockers, we've got 529 gears in the axles, but this transmission is tall, which I knew was gonna be a problem whenever I looked up the ratios online. <laughs> so I might have a solve for that, but we'll, we'll save that for a future video. Right now, I wanna to continue to talk about this old Land Rover. I got most of the gauges working. There's only a couple that don't. And I did add a boost gauge because I think that boost and EGT are both really important whenever you're tuning a diesel, at least have one. In this case, I chose boost. I decided to change out the fan to a push style fan. And originally it wasn't working because I went off the diagram of the uh, Amazon relay and right away it looked like it was wrong, but I just went based on that. And then we discovered that it was in fact wrong. So I ran it to a switch that I had already wired um, in a little switch panel, and then it made it to where we had zero temperature issues after that. The 2000s Range Rover steering box that we added has plenty of power, and it turns these aired down 37s no problem at all. Um, and I think it just it feels very satisfying in combination with this short 88 inch wheelbase. Or well, we're going to measure it later on in the video, and you'll see it's not exactly 88 inches, but that's what these came with stock. The 37, 13, 15. 
50 R17 Nitto Mud Grapplers, I think look perfect on here. And I know that the internet hates these tires just because too many mall crawlers used them, but these are great, man. They look really good. They've got tons of traction. Like, I like the compound. And we're aired down to about 5 PSI right now. And we're just so light that you can barely even see bulge. That's what's so funny. This is probably around 3,000 to 3,200, somewhere in there, as far as, like, how many pounds it weighs. The Method Bead Grips, I think, look phenomenal on here, and I'm not concerned at all about being at only 5 PSI with uh, with the Method Bead Grips because they're just so good at holding onto the beads of tires. If you've ever watched my channel before, you know that I love these things, and I've got them on multiple vehicles. Outside of that, this thing doesn't ride like a Cadillac. It's really smooth, but you're getting bounced around like you're in a vehicle with a very short wheelbase and that doesn't weigh much and it's kind of perfect it adds to the vintage vibe and feel and i mean just look at this footage you can tell that this is fun in this exact environment Let's talk about airing up. This is a little port that I haven't tried yet, but this goes to my air compressor, which is in here. Look at that. So I got a switch that I wired up here Ugh. that turns everything on and off. This is a master kill. And then I have a ground there so I can run things into here to, for future. And then, um, yeah, solenoids for air lockers. Boom, which I guess we, I don't know if we've talked about air lockers yet. And then, uh, Air between. Listen to that engine. It is purring, man. I love it. Exhaust sounds good. Engine sounds good. The downside, of course, well, I say of course, like you know, I know. There's a pretty good exhaust leak out of the uh, exhaust manifold. But outside of that, this thing drives great on the street. It's really not that bad. We're really, really short wheelbase. I don't know, are we allowed to turn here? The road's blocked off. I think we are. Really, really short wheelbase, which makes us squirrely at speed, but we're still able to do 65 miles an hour. No problem. Like, power is not a problem. It's just the sketchy that's the problem. So, um, it's really not bad. I, I'm pretty impressed with how well-rounded this thing is for being a classic. Vehicles of, in the short off-road vehicles in this age are going to be squirrely on the highway. I think you go, whenever I add hydro assist, probably gonna firm it up a little bit and I might throw like a rear sway bar and that will probably help us get it to where it's a little bit better going 60 plus I, I couldn't imagine myself ever wanting to go 80 or anything but 65 would a healthy 65 and not feel sketched out would be nice whenever we get back I plan on adding hydro assist this is something that I've done a lot of vehicles and it, it does increase your like on-road stability and it's kind of like the world's best steering stabilizer Outside of that, this thing gets phenomenal mileage. Like, we wheeled multiple trails and only burned like a quarter tank of diesel. And I think that once I start to work through some of the finer details, this is probably going to be my daily next summer. It's super fun, it turns heads, and it honestly so far feels very practical. It's time to get some metrics on this thing. I know a bunch of you guys nerd out like me. Wheelbase, belly height, all that. We're gonna, me and Rudy are gonna get this right now. All right, hold that side, yeah. center. Oop. We are at, no way, it shrunk from stock. <laughs> We're like 87 inches, if I'm being generous. <laughs> wow. Well, because when the tires got bigger, I had to pull the front axle back a little bit. I pushed the rear back though, so I thought that it was gonna counteract. Oh. Because, you know, this thing, it would easily flex up in there and just grab the light out of it. Oh, I'm so sure. that's, that's why I had to pull it out. I have the same problem on the Mini Cooper. <laughs> Belly clearance. We are at 20 and a quarter to that cross member. And the uneven ground. Yeah. 
<laughs> so that's um with I mean that's gonna it's a hell of a breakover, that's for sure. I don't see myself hitting belly very often anyway. No way. Now axle clearance. Let's look underneath the rear deck. Oh. Mm, 12 and 3 eighths. That's not bad. I mean, it's not to rub it in, but it is a little bit more than you just because you got one tons of the same size tire. I don't know. Let's measure it. Oh, true. Let's measure it. Did I say 12 and a quarter? Yeah. Well, your fork, is it shaved? Nope. Not at all. Non shaved 14 bolt versus a 9.5 inch uh, Toyota? <laughs> nine, <laughs> nine and a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me air up my tires. I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta get more. Rudy's not gonna make it, which bums me out. We spent all yesterday, well, half of yesterday, tinkering, trying to get that front end to unlock for his Mini Cooper. I don't remember what I filmed and what I haven't filmed, to be honest with you. So, I'm bummed. I was really looking forward to wheeling with that Mini Cooper. The thing is so cool. So, we'll have to do that at a later date. And I'll probably do it with my buggy instead of with this. <laughs> now we're headed to the trail. Well, I missed the kick in the big game. Nailed my driving test. Misspelled my ex-girlfriend's name on the tattoo on my chest. Cause I can't do nothing right. I can't seem to get along. This trail is stuffed with great obstacles and you really get to see some of the benefits of the smaller size rigs versus the bigger size rigs. Catch that. So what did you just do? We did it all we did all that two-wheel drive. I forgot the lock tops. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. So now we have a front and rear axle doing the same thing, which would be very beneficial today. Not beneficial enough, unfortunately, because I am not geared low enough to have the kind of control that I prefer when I wheel. I had to give every obstacle the Moab bump and I would try to slow crawl stuff, but gosh, is it hard in this thing. It's just geared way too tall. So I hit cones everywhere, unfortunately, just because anytime there was a bump, I had to jump my way through it, and um, which isn't the end of the world. We, I'm not gonna win this thing anyway. We're here to have fun, uh, but it would have been nice to hit less cones, just for me. Matt got a little squirrely on this off-camber obstacle, and originally I wasn't gonna do it, just because it is tippy and this is very unwise. Mrs. Dirt Lifestyle, please look away. This is your husband not being very smart. Um, but after watching uh, Matt try to get through this and then watching Holly get kind of bound up and hit a cone through this, I was looking at the footprint of my little Land Rover thinking, if I drive through that backwards, I'm going to still be able to go between the cones, which is what the goal is. And I'm pretty sure that my short wheelbase and narrow wheelbase will give me some benefit here. This Land Rover weighs half of the next lightest person in this competition, so I'm using that to my advantage in combination with a rear-mounted winch. It's easy to get your front tires in the right position, but the rear tires don't always want to track where you want them to. And that's what had happened to the people who had tried this obstacle before me. So when I got out and looked at it, I was thinking, you know what, let's just slide this rear end over with the winch, and then I'll just use the winch to lower myself down safely and it won't be as big of a deal for me. <laughs> so this was, I had plenty of wins, plenty of losses. This is probably the best win um, from the whole thing for me. It just was really cool to be able to use this thing, use its small dimension, use its very lightweight, 
and its uh, rear winch capability to get myself out of a jam. And there's a bunch more fun stuff that happens in this competition, and I highly recommend you check out the Onyx video when it comes out so that you can see this competition in its entirety. 1,600 miles each way from my house to Arizona, and I'm back, and I have a truck cab. I'm super pumped. So the next phase of this, I didn't build this for Arizona. It was fun to take it to Arizona. I loved wheeling with the top off, but now I'm back home. It's cold, as you can see, and the snow's coming in. Snow level's already at 3,500 feet. It's just gonna keep dropping, and this thing is gonna be a snow machine. So that is the next phase of life for this Land Rover. I wanted to get the truck cab on there, so I'm encapsulated in there. I wanna have a truck bed full of recovery gear and all this stuff, so me and my friends could go out, find deep powder, and make fun snow videos for you. So, thank you so much for watching. What do you think of this thing? I think it's so fun. I'm really interested to see if you guys are into it in the way that I am. I think that it's like, it checks like a rare box for us here in the United States. It checks like a classic box. It checks a badass off-roader box now that it's got 37s and it'll be on the 38 inch Icelandic snow tires here in a week or two, hopefully. So let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.